Hey people, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Iceland again. Yeah. We're obsessed with this place and I don't know, I feel like we still have a lot to say. So Definitely. Hopefully you're still interested. This one's going to be quite niche. It's going to be all about hiring a car in Iceland. Why you absolutely have to hire a car in Iceland. Why we think you should go with Lagoon Car Rental. These are the people that we went with and we really like them. Some practical tips for driving in Iceland, things that you need to know. So yeah, first things first, why do you have to drive a car when you're in Iceland? Tell us, why? So basically, uh, Iceland has no trains at all. No trains. Wow. No trains? Yeah, no, no trains spotting for you. Um, I don't know. Do you know? Tell us in the comments. I don't really know. That was just a rhetorical question. They have buses, but it's really limited services and they don't go to all the places you want to go. They also do coach tours, a lot of coach hire tour companies, but we saw a few of these and they look really crowded and basically um, the main reason you're going to want to have a car in Iceland is for the flexibility. You can stop whenever you like, you can look at whatever you like, um, and you're going to want to stop all the time and just look at things and take pictures. And we almost always travel, well, we always travel by car or, wait, not car. <laughs> We always travel by public transport, so by bus or train, usually by bus. Occasionally we'll get driv driven places by other people, thank you. Um, and we also fly, of course, but even we knew that we had to drive in Iceland. Uh, if somebody doesn't drive, I, I have a license. I've driven in Germany, I've driven yeah. in Australia. You're a good driver. Um, but I'm not confident at driving, mainly because you always say I'm bad at driving. But um, this was something I really wanted to do, so um, we did it and it was great and I would recommend driving in Iceland for sure. And it's not just the places where you kind of, you're driving past and you think, wow, we've got to stop and have a look at this. It's the other places as well where you, like you might just stop for a break and then think, oh wow, what's that? Like we did this and we saw a lava tunnel and we would just never have known that if we were on the coach or on the bus. It's so much more pretty than I imagined. I don't know why. We're nearly at the Blue Lagoon. That, that there, I think, is the Blue Lagoon. And we just stopped because we thought it was the Blue Lagoon here. Um, but instead we found like a lava tunnel. This is a tunnel made by lava. It's very big. It's very big. Let's go and check it out. Okay, so hopefully we've convinced you to drive in Iceland. If we haven't, let us know because I really, really want you to drive in Iceland. You just please. please. Comment below. Yeah, okay, so you've decided to do it. Thank you. And um, now you're wondering, who shall I go with? Now we really recommend Lagoon Car Rental. These are the people we work with and yeah, there are lots of reasons why we chose them and there are lots of reasons why we like them. So the reason we picked them, um, they're a small family company, which is cute. They have a great website. It's really clear. It's really easy to use. Oh, we spoke to them by email and they seem really nice. But the two main reasons we picked them, number one is that they have offices near Keflavik Airport and Reykjavik Airport and they will pick you up from the airport for free. And this is really important. Uh, not all the car hire companies do this. So what might happen is you land in Keflavik, well, you almost definitely will land in Keflavik Airport because it's the international airport. If your car hire company is based in Reykjavik you'll have to get a bus in and that bus will cost you 16 pounds or 21 dollars and which is a lot that's just one way that's a lot of money I think that's for a bus that's just that's ridiculous it's ridiculous you know it's, I think it, sh it should definitely be included with your car hire rate and with Lagoon car rental it is so that was the first great thing the second great thing about them is they're open 24 7 so you can go pick up your car at any time and drop it off at any time and then have them drop or pick you off at the airport at any time as well. Again, that's so important. We looked at some other companies and, you know, they were open till, well, one, because we were flying from Iceland at three in the morning and one company closed their offices at 6 p.m. and they said, well, you're going to have to bring the car at six. And we were like, well, what, then what? Because we were staying outside of Reykjavik. Doesn't matter. My point is it's it's really important. And it also meant that when we gave the keys back, we could they could look around the car and discuss it with us. And I think other companies will let you drop the car off, drop the keys off without even speaking to them. And what if there's some kind of dispute? How are you gonna say, well, that obviously isn't a scratch because I'm stood right here and there is none. So yeah, those are the two main reasons we went with them and we're really glad that we did, which we're gonna tell you about right now. 
Okay, so we picked up at Keflavik Airport by Dari, and he was just really lovely. He told us some stories about Iceland, and he's from Iceland, obviously. He's really good English, and you know, he just made us really excited to start driving around Iceland. Um, well, I mentioned the sign. I love the sign. You when mentioned we, the sign. When we got picked up by the um, by Dari, he welcomed us, and he had a little sign, and it was really easy to spot him. Did it have know, my name on it? Because it had Laura's name on it. My name on it. Um, which was really cool, and it really helped. Yeah. Yeah, so he was really great and then he took us to the offices and he went through the paperwork with us and it was a really good speed because it wasn't really long and boring but I didn't feel like we were rushed either so it was, you know, I mean it's paperwork, what can, what can you really say about it? Yeah. Um, he also talked to us about extra insurances that we could get so in the end we actually went for a grit insurance and in Iceland there's kind of a lot of grit flying around and it can scratch the car and in the worst circumstance, well not the worst, but in a bad circumstance it can go into the windscreen and, and smash it and then you have to pay for a whole new windscreen so yeah we kind of talked it through with him and he, we decided to go for that one but he was really good though because there were lots of different insurance, extra insurances you could get and he wasn't like pushing us to get all these random ones that we would never use so that was really nice. I, I don't know, I just felt like we could kind of have a conversation with him and yeah, he seemed nice. He was really nice. This was the first hire car we'd ever hired, so I was a little bit nervous about it. And he was really patient and answered all my stupid questions like, how do the windscreen wipers work? How can I turn the lights on? And, oh, that's a really good point. Do you want to tell them about the lights? Oh yeah, it's a, uh, it's the law in Iceland to always have your lights on. Your car lights have to be on at all times, not just during the night, but also during the day. Anyway, the, the kind of giving us the keys and showing us around, we looked around the car with him and there were a couple of scratches that he noted on this piece of paper and you know on our contract and the whole process was really smooth really easy and we felt really relaxed about it and then we drove off and um then what happened and then we had a great time in iceland so check out our playlist for that so yeah we didn't actually say anything about the car yet so the car itself was really nice it was a hyundai i20 uh, it seemed very new. Um, well, you can it's tell us. Less than us, a year old. Less than a year old. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, it, there was lots of space in it. I mean, we were three people: uh, Laura, Laura's sister, and myself. And there's plenty of room for our luggage uh, and for ourselves, obviously. And well, wait, that? tell us the most important thing. What's the most important what, thing? What color was the car? Oh, the color was. Uh, it's a white car. I don't know why that's important to you. Why is that important to you? That's actually, it's good to have a white car, but what if it snows though? That's a good point. I guess maybe they use a red one then. Maybe they, they change it, yeah. They uh, just color it in differently or whatever. I don't know, but it was it was cool. I don't know, obviously we're not really car people. Oh, no. actually one, it was an automatic. No, it wasn't. It was a manual car and it was a petrol car. And it was quite, like Tambo said, it was big enough for all of us. I, like, I requested a small car so it'd be easy to park and stuff and it was perfect for that. I could, I did a parallel park and I did a reverse park. The reverse park was actually really bad but that, that was just me, not the car. And you can also hire uh, some extra accessories such as uh, mm. GPS, sat nav yeah. even, yeah, or yeah. Uh, wireless internet. Yeah. And yeah, that kind of stuff. And also car, uh, Lagoon Car Rental, they don't just do little cars for losers like me. They do really big cool Jeeps and they do automatics if you're not comfortable with a the manual. They do diesel cars, they do petrol cars. And another really cool thing about it, they did tell us when they gave us the keys, oh, this is a petrol car, but it also said on the keys, this is a petrol car. So, you know, because if you put diesel in a petrol car, then the whole world explodes. And We stayed on the roads, on the main roads a lot. If you want to go off-road, you might... Uh, you will need a Jeep. You will need a Jeep, so uh, keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay, so we were loving our Lagoon car, rental car. Where did we drive it? Wow, we drove it across Iceland and we took an amazing route called the Golden Circle. Okay. Which is really, really cool. Yeah. And we made an entire video about this already yesterday, um, which features other top reasons why you should really visit Iceland. And you can check that video out right now. So yeah, on the first day we drove to Lagoon, the Blue Lagoon, and we drove to our Airbnb. And you can check a video out about that as well. And then the second day, like Tambo said, we did the golden, we did half of the golden circle. So the golden circle sort of starts or ends at Reykjavik and goes round. Um, so if Iceland's like this, it's a tiny little circle of it. It's not, it's not like the whole of Iceland because that takes like it's a week. big enough, yeah. Yeah, it takes about three hours to drive the whole way around. And we went round and we saw waterfalls and geysers and we stayed at this lovely place called Minibor Cottages. Yeah, our original plan was to drive 
all the way around like this but in the end we just drove like this and then back i wish we'd driven around the whole way of but course but we, we needed didn't. more time for that anyways there's more um information about that on the other video uh, yeah the second day yeah so check that out all right next up we're going to give you some practical tips for driving in iceland this isn't just for uh, lagoon car rental this is you know any car that you, even if you buy a car yeah driving in iceland what side of the road do they drive on in iceland the correct side which is the right side and which side does the driver sit on? The correct side, which is the left side. Yeah. So we get a bit confused about this, but <laughs> basically in Iceland, the driver sits on the left and drives on the right. So if you're American, if you're from Europe, this will be very usual for you. If you're from Britain or Australia or Japan, I think, and maybe, maybe India. Um, they drive on the opposite side to you. So I took, a, I'd driven a little bit in the UK before we went to Iceland to get some practice in. I was really confident and then we got to Iceland and I was on the other side and I was like, oh. Well, you're still confident to be fair. It was, it was fine. It was yeah. fine. I find it's, if you're sat uh, in the opposite way and you have to drive in the opposite way, it's okay. I would never be able to drive on the right, sat on the right. If you're, if I'm driving on the right, I have to be sat on the left. Okay, that makes sense. Do you know what the speed limits are in Iceland? Like what? Is it miles or kilometers per it's hour? It's kilometers per hour. Okay. And it was, I saw 70 a lot, I think. 90. I mean 90. <laughs> I saw 90 a lot. So in the little residential areas and around Reykjavik, it's between 30 and 50 kilometers per hour, usually-ish, or slower, probably, if it's really residential. But around the big roads, it's 80 or 90. Um, so if it's really paved and not very gritty, it'll be 90. If it's a bit more gritty, it'll be 80. I actually did 80 pretty much the whole time um, because I was... Playing it safe, come yeah, on. Yeah, and there were all these cars behind me. And then my sister was like, you know you're doing like 50 miles per hour, don't you? <laughs> okay, so um, all the signs in um, Iceland, I don't really know how to explain this, but if you're looking for Reykjavik and you're reading Reykjavik, the sign will say Reykjavik as well. So it's not like when you're in Greece or uh, Arabic countries or China where you look at the name and you don't can't read it and you look at the sign and you can't read it. It's all, it's the same alphabet we use, so you can read the road signs. I don't know how else, how better to say that. A lot of them were actually in English as well, with the cottages we stayed at, it said in English. And the English is very good in Iceland in yeah. general, so. Yeah, that's another thing, when we were at the car hire, the lagoon car place, their English was impeccable, yes. so it wasn't like, oh, how are we gonna... And the contract was in English as well, yeah, everything yeah. was in English, so that helps. Okay, so our last tip about um, Iceland driving is, uh, the legal age to drive in Iceland is 17, but the legal age to hire a car is 20 and you have to have had a license for at least a year. So yeah, when it came to dropping the car off, everything was really smooth. We told them we'd be there at 5am, we were actually there at 4am, but they were still really nice about it. They checked the car free with us and then they took us back to the airport. For me, this was really, really important because like I said earlier, you can, there were some places where you could just park the car and drop the keys off. And I wouldn't have been comfortable with that because you know, we actually spoke to them and said, is everything okay with the car? Yes. Okay. Phew. <laughs> the end. It makes a difference in that way you it have, does. you know, like closure and you can yeah. just chill out. Yeah. And it really made life a lot better and, and easier. It was, it was so great they took us to the airport in the car as well. That was, yeah. that was really good. Yeah, it really made the trip yeah. better actually. So. Yeah. so yeah, in conclusion, drive in Iceland, go with Lagoon Car Rental and um, keep your lights on. And subscribe to this channel. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully that was interesting. If you have any questions, um, drop us a comment below or maybe contact Lagoon Car Rental directly because, I don't know. We well, if you already, <laughs> if you already been to Iceland, tell us your experience. Yeah. Who did you rent a car with? Was it a positive or negative experience? Drop us a comment below. Definitely check back tomorrow for a new video. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you're new and we'll be back tomorrow with our new video. Bye. Bye.